friends and comrades i come today to share an interesting anecdote about the state and understanding of democracy particularly in our country and the developed ones i'll be referring to england the so called the mother of democracy in the world i was having dinner yesterday with a few friends it was a kind of a fun get together and one of the friends asked me all of a sudden realizing that i am a political commentator and he might elicit certain information from me he referred to the slogans raised in jawaharlal nehru university and jamia millia islamia during the protest against caa and before he asked me if it was right to raise anti india slogans and pro pakistani praise whether it amounts to treason i told him nationalism is not practiced nor is it defined in symbolism and through emotions slogan hearing even politically motivated slogans could be expression of emotions and wrong articulation of some people's feelings they may be influenced by the western interest i told him a similar story in england when india and england or pakistan in england played cricket on the soil of united kingdom it so happens that the people of indian origin and people of pakistani descent will support their respective teams and those supporting shouting cheering for their teams are citizens of united kingdom so norman tebit the chairman of conservative party at a time gave a criteria which was called interestingly the tebit test and he said those who do not support our national team they should be proceeded against action should be taken against them but britain as the tradition of democracy exists they laughed it away nobody took him seriously they know perhaps that by sloganeering you are not going to build a nation you are not going to have a country prosper until you have tangible material development either in terms of institutions or economy or even society they know emotions alone and political sloganeering do not build a nation another example which is um, a, a recent uh, trend in our country so called hate speeches religious acrimony people commenting on each other's religion there have been murders people put in jail a fires filed against them whether that is also right in a secular country in a pluralist society if we should be so much hate mongering in our religious beliefs similar example in britain we have a huge pantheon of gods and goddesses which is the beauty perhaps of hinduism which allows and accommodates multiple perspectives in belief and practice of its religion but britain single god religion for them jesus is the manifestation of god himself and jesus is the god in that sense i told a friend who was asking me the questions of nationalism and uh, pro country slogans i told him there was a film made or sought to be made on jesus portraying his character mainly his sexuality which was quite offensive quite a historical out of facts 
and out of the mood of any Christian population. But no cinema halls were brought. And the film producers, not producers or actors were not hounded or harassed. Nothing of that sort happened. Because people dismissed it as a lunacy of a particular film industry. So that is the sign of democracy. India, interestingly, from 2019 to 2020, fell 53 places in its democracy ranking because the institutions they found were fragile and not functioning to their optimum capacity and autonomy. That is why India was put in the category of flawed democracies. Only about 23 countries were treated as full democracies, 52 as flawed democracy. So while we may be proud and be happy about uh, sustaining our democracy for so long, we have to rethink and reflect on how we are enriching or endangering our democracies. Democracy is a political system which is ever in evolution. There is no final word on democracy. We should be constantly vigilant. As it is said, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. So we have to remain vigilant about institutions and individuals around us, whether they are going to harm our democracy, knowingly or unknowingly. Democracy is a standard that should be set and reset so that people follow those standards, those democratic culture and practices. And that is how they uphold, the succeeding generations uphold democracy. I often say Britain doesn't even have a constitution. But they maintain their democracy on the basis of conventions and traditions that have been set. That is why the political leadership in any country should set traditions which can be emulated by generations next. That is how they are regarded as statesmen. And anyone tinkering with the democracy, which has become the latest political philosophy, as it accommodates different perspectives and gives space to everyone, that is the best system. Like Churchill said, it may not have done wonders, but give me a better one. Better political system than a democracy. So democracy is by far the most popular and desired political system. And India is credited with maintaining one only light in Asia which has sustained democracy except occasional distortions, we should guard against such distortions and innovate time and again on making our democracy more powerful, formidable and vibrant. Thank you.